Hello. We have um, Jill and Rose and Cindy, like from Travel Nurse Across America. We might have a little um, audio. Hey, Rose, got anything yet? In here. But they're going to talk to you about um, more COVID 19 issues, about PPE and unemployment. So I'm going to hop off here and let them talk. Great. Thanks, Rachel. So we are uh, very honored to be with all of you today. Uh, we know how racked uh, the travel nurse community is, all of the travelers, allied professionals, nurses, um, all of you. Um, so we are here to be uh, a force for good and give you the expertise that we have to share, to create some comfort, give you some education, help you make good decisions, help you stay safe, help you feel more protected. That's our goal today. Uh, I have with me uh, Jill Eliason, who is our Vice President of Clinical Services across America. Uh, and Jill, uh, are you are you there? Can we hear you? Do you want to give your bio or should I just highlight your uh, your notable I pedigree? I can hear you. Good. Yes, great. I don't think I need to give a, a bio, but um, as Rose stated, the Vice President of Clinical Services for Travel Nurse Across America, and I look forward to some of the discussions and questions you all have so that we can help ease nerves and get through COVID-19 altogether. Amen. So that's Jill. Jill and I work really closely together. Oh, I'm Rose Fulton, by the way. I have to introduce myself. Um, I'm the senior VP of recruitment for Travel Nurse Cross America, and we're joined. We have a we have a we have a newbie uh, to our Facebook Live. Jill and I have done a whopping two of these, so we're better. Uh, but we've got we've got Cindy Jones, uh, who comes to us from our Traveler Benefits uh, Department. So welcome, Cindy. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Uh, Rachel and the Gypsy Nurse folks were um, great, and they did a survey out there, and they surveyed what topics nurses wanted to hear about. So we narrowed it down to the three topics, and we brought subject matter experts here so that we can help address those questions uh, firsthand. Uh, first and foremost, came up PPE. So people wanted to know about um, personal protective equipment and what's happening out there, what we're seeing. Uh, Jill is our subject matter expert on that and all things clinical. Uh, another popular topic was unemployment. How do you file for it? What are the state-by-state -state rules? What's happening? And that's where Cindy comes in. Cindy has an incredible background uh, in benefits and has a great deal of subject matter expertise there. And she's been helping and coaching and directing all of our travelers through this. Uh, and then the other topic was cancellations and terminations. And that's where I come in. I've got, I've got the cheery one. I've got the great feel-good topic of today. Uh, but I am here to talk to you about what are some things that you all can do to protect yourselves uh, from getting canceled, what happens, what we're seeing, uh, and just how to navigate this. So that's where we are. We've got some questions popping up. So um, our first question comes from Todd. So advice on current travel nurses who are in current contract and are planning to extend. What's your advice on negotiating details like pay and other details? It's a great question, Todd. Uh, so I would say if you don't ask, you don't get. So it is so important to have conversations with your recruiter. Uh, the things you want to be asking your recruiter is, have they seen um, jobs post with your current facility that have higher rates? Uh, have things changed um, with regards to your job? Are you working in a different unit? Are you taking on different responsibilities? Uh, those are all important questions to be asking, and it's up to your recruiter and whoever it is that interacts with the client to really speak about um, what it is that they can offer you for your extension. We've seen some facilities definitely step up because they have the wherewithal to do it. We've seen some not. So no promises made, but it's important to ask. So I think that that's a great question on everybody's mind. Um, and believe me, you know, we understand that these are incredibly stressful times. Uh, and I think it's very important that you all feel compensated as much as you possibly can for this. But on a certain level, man, there's no money that can. Right. But we know how important it is, though. You need to feel appreciated. So thank you for the question. It's a good way for us to start off. Uh, Jill, um, what are your thoughts about <clears throat> PPE. That was the first topic that came up. So would love to get your insights on that. 
Yeah, you know, a lot of things have changed just over the last five to six weeks, which which has been fantastic. PPE shortages have posed just a tremendous challenge for the hospital systems across the country. So some of the things that we're seeing and hearing are much, much better today than they were a few weeks ago. Many of our hospitals are having anywhere from a two-day supply to a 10-day supply. Uh, as nurses out there working, I would absolutely understand what the COVID protocol is at any hospital you're working at. Understand what they have for you in regards to PPE uh, as, it, as it relates to taking care of a patient who may be undergoing a procedure, uh, as it relates to taking care of a potential positive COVID patient or a uh, definite positive COVID patient. Um, as nurses, if you don't feel like you have adequate supply, always utilize your chain of command within the hospital that you're in as you would for any other escalatory process and then i think for those of you who work with many different agencies always escalate within your agency as well if you feel like you don't have the right ppe supply um, we've got a large clinical team that takes care of all uh, travelers who are experiencing these in the hospitals today but i do have to share massive increase in um, happy calls surrounding PPE. So a majority of our hospitals are now having, like I said earlier, a good two to 10 day supply and our calls surrounding lack of PPE have really diminished. So I think that um, the government has stepped up and I think a lot of hospitals have the right amount of PPE equipment today. And again, the most important thing I can say is always utilize your chain of command and always escalate to your agency if you don't feel safe in your workplace. Great, great, Jill. It is a different world than when we started this, what, five weeks ago. So that is good to hear um, that there have been some advances there. Um, our next question is from Philip. Excellent. So glad to hear from you, Philip. If I get exposed to COVID-19 and have to quarantine, will my contract be canceled or will I just miss the days I'm quarantined? Great question. Uh, I want to talk about, I'm going to put on out there the, pre, the disclaimer, which is every contract's different. Every facility is different. Uh, we're finding at times certain units are different so that it's critical to know that we're going to give you some broad um, answers based on our experience, but that it's so important to speak with your recruiter in the facility to find out specifically what it is. But Cindy, do you feel good about um, handling that question for us about the COVID quarantine? Um, as far as the cancellation goes? Right. Um, what we're saying is that our in, in our world, um, we're not seeing the cancellations during that period for the most part. Um, but again, contract negotiation, you know, and, and as far as what it says, um, what we see is that for the most part, our nurses are able to extend through the quarantine and then we're trying to get them back as soon as that quarantine is over. So we're, we're checking with the facilities and making sure that we're uh, clear on what their protocol is for re-entry and so on as well. Okay. So um, not, not a, a global uh, cancel, as we've seen. It's, it's yes. kind of a case. Super great. Excellent. Thanks, Cindy. That, that is what we've experienced too, um, is that the quarantine is not the end of the road. Uh, many nurses are able to fulfill the quarantine requirements and get to work. Uh, and the hospitals are so grateful to have them. And we love all of our nurses who go through that because it's hard. It's hard to quarantine away from home. It's hard to quarantine without your loved ones. It's hard. So we really appreciate all of the nurses, gosh, who've really put themselves out there uh, and have not walked away from the nursing <laughs> and have really done an extraordinary job in professionalism and service um, to be there. And we've seen a lot of really good wins and some success stories. So they're, they're out there and we're really grateful when we see them. Um, while we percolate uh, on some more questions, uh, I think it's probably good to talk a little bit about, oh, here, oh, great. Um, we have another question. Emery, thank you so much, Emery. I am going to ask your question. Uh, how can we go about applying for unemployment if your specialty is not hiring? Outpatient, OR, class repeats. I've heard uh, I will need to apply in each state I worked in last year. Gosh, that is the question we've been waiting for. So thank you for, for asking it because you asked it in beautiful, complete detail. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pivot over to, uh, to Cindy, our HR expert on unemployment. Sure. 
uh, you should have our, um, there is an AARP work site that goes to the unemployment benefits and it's each individual state identified their website as well as their phone numbers. So you should have that in this posting. Um, so you would, regardless of your specialty, if you've been quarantined or if you've been uh, early termed or um, uh, I just went blank on the expression, so sorry. Uh, when you are um, low census, uh, we are encouraging nurses to apply for unemployment with this stimulus package. There's such a liberal approach to unemployment at this point. Take advantage of that. Go ahead and call or go on the website and apply. Um, you would be eligible for this benefit. Uh, you need to uh, call or go on the site. We'll need your name, your date of birth, your social, your mailing information. I'd encourage you to go ahead and have your banking information. They're going to want to know who your employer is and then whatever your last assignment was. The last assignment. Your, your very last assignment is where you need to go. That state, because that's where your records are going to be held last. And that is where you need to apply for the unemployment is the state in which you work last. Okay, got so, it. Um, yeah, so that'll be that'll be positive. Yeah, I'm getting some feedback from the group that the audio is breaking up a little bit. Okay. Um, sometimes it's a quiet time and the <laughs> gremlins get quiet. Yeah. So I'll just underline AARP, and I know we got a lot of young, great beautiful millennial nurses out there. <laughs> but AARP is the American Association of Retired Persons. They have great resources. Uh, and we've been giving it to our nurses because they have a very complete how-to guide on unemployment. Uh, where you apply, you apply in the state you last lived. Uh, Cindy talked about having bank information ready, you know, being really prepared uh, and utilizing um, those tools. And you should be able to take care, they should take care of you in a quarantine situation, uh, end of assignment, uh, early early cancellation, reduction in hours, all of that will get you, all of that makes you eligible for unemployment benefits. Oh boy, Much it's like- more liberal than before. You know, okay, you don't have to be looking for another position or anything. It's just, if you've been affected. Terrific, um, and I've got like, it's like, it's multiplying here like popcorn. <laughs> Uh, Lily, Lily, my contract canceled early and I'm looking for another, should I file for unemployment? Yeah. Yes. You paid into it. You paid for it. Apply for it. Don't be silly. Um, Amrit, so just the last state. My tax accountant thought every state from last year. Not true? Go with the last state you've worked. Last state you've worked. That is, that is, that is our best advice from an HR standpoint. Yes. Yes. So filing taxes, yes. HR benefits, different. Right, right. And this I hope is that helped, Amory. The stimulus package has the unemployment in a different realm than normal. So apply where you've last worked, and that will be your entry point into unemployment. And hopefully you won't need it more than a few weeks. You know, if you've been quarantined, you're able to return, or if you've left census and can find another position. I mean, it just depends on the situation. Okay. Great. Thanks, Cindy. Hope we're you That has been such, seriously, I've been seeing that all over the place. I've gotten some feedback from the folks out there from the community that they're hearing typing, that it sounds like keyboarding. And I'm hands free. We're hands free. So, yeah, Rachel. Weird feedback. Yeah, I know, Rachel. I know. Rachel's our Wizard of Oz behind here. And when we go live, I can't see her. So, we're not at our best. And I apologize. Thank you for your patience. Um, hi, Jennifer Smith. Hi. Hi, Jennifer. Jennifer Smith is here. Hey, what's up? Uh, I see Sam. The gyps gypsy nurse supplied the link to the AARP on this feed. So for those of you who had questions there, documents there. Hi, Brittany. Hi, Amory. Oh, Angie. Oh. <laughs> hi, Angie. <laughs> Angie. <laughs> So just to clarify, we should apply even though we are working, but our hours have been cut back each week. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. Yeah. Yeah. Give it a shot. 
And just uh, one one thing is the uh, federal unemployment process is scheduled to end by about July 31st, so it's going a good while. Most right. uh, state unemployment ends after 25 weeks. So um, you you when you apply with the state, it automatically gets your application into the feds. So um, it's a streamlined process. And usually when you're applying, the day you speak to someone, you know you've been approved. So it's not the big the wow. So you're seeing same day, right? Cindy, same day approvals we're hearing, guys. Okay. And you should be able to receive their first payment within about a week. So within a week. It's a, it's a pretty seeing. timely process compared to the norm. Beautiful. I'm going to repeat just because I know that this has been like the most requested info and Cindy's been talking about that the federal unemployment is gone to is going to July 31st, these relaxed rules, right? And that each state seems to have 25 weeks uh, and that we've seen experiences where people are getting approved the day they apply, like hearing about it on that initial call the same day and that they're receiving check checks within a week. That's very hopeful. I hope that gives I hope that gives some of you guys peace of mind. Yeah. I know you know, became I, nurses because you never thought you'd ever be without a freaking job. This must be like a complete clot. Like, what? Who am I? Where am I? What universe am I in? Um, but trust me, you're entitled to it. You paid for it. You earned it. Okay? You're right. Do it. Do it. Um, Angie, we love you too. <laughs> Lily, we appreciate you a lot. Oh, what a beautiful name, Harvest. Oh my gosh, thank your parents for that. <laughs> I've never heard that name, Harvest. That is great. Wow. Um, Harvest. I worked 11 hours last week and earned too much to receive anything. That's in Tennessee. Mm. Cindy? Not aware of that. Cindy's not aware of that. We're giving that the ick on the sniff test. We have not heard anything like that. But I would say, Harvest, you know, we service all 50 states and we don't have a lot of nurses in every single state. So we've got trends around where our travelers are and how we hear things. And with each state being different, you know, if you're in Washington state, Washington state's like, you know, some states are way more ungenerous uh, and the criteria is a lot less than others. Yep. Go figure. Federalism. Read it. Read about it. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, Olivia. Uh, what is till July 31st? Okay, Amrit. What's till July 31st is the federal, at this point, the um, federal uh, government put forth an uh, expansion of uh, an, an increase in the um, unemployment benefit. So that federal rule is till July 31st. And that's the federal rules that came out with the stimulus sort of relief package for the additional 600 bucks, right, Cindy? That's right. That's right. So I hope that helps, Amrit. Uh, Olivia, Jill, what should nurses know if they are asked to help on floors they're not used to working on? Uh, and if so, floated to be helping hands? Great question. Awesome question. And we're seeing a lot of this. Uh, quite honestly, the industry is a little bit different right now. And nurses are asked to do some things that are a little bit outside of their comfort zone. So I think it's important for nurses to know um, and remember that your base is a, a registered nurse. You were trained to do so many things that are outside of your specialty. So remember that you may be asked to, um, let's say you're a med surge nurse, you might be asked to go down to the ER to work as helping hands and task for the ER. ER nurses. Maybe you're starting IVs for them. Maybe you're um, stocking shelves. Maybe you're triaging patients um, who are COVID. We just don't know. But I think um, the expectation today is really a lot of flexibility amongst those that are working in the hospitals. Um, being utilized as a sitter isn't out of the question. Being utilized as a, a certified nursing assistant on a unit isn't out of the question. And that's all very normal right now. Um, the only time you should be concerned and should escalate and again I'll go back to that chain of command in the hospital or escalate to your agency that you work with is if you're being assigned a patient assignment that is outside of your skill set that's the most important thing so if you're being asked to float find out what your duties will be for that shift while you float um, but if you're given a patient assignment that's not within your skill set you need to escalate within the hospital and escalate to your agency great question
I muted. Um, Harvest, we're friends now. Thanks for the laugh. I'm giggling right back at you. And um, Valerie, thank you so much for the support. Before this call, we all looked at each other and we were like, lipstick, makeup, hair, like I don't even know. So we appreciate, we appreciate the shout out. <laughs> Loved it. Um, so yeah, I do think we wanted to talk to you about uh, cancellations. So I'm gonna take the floor on that. Oh, I'm in. It's a delay. I'm back. You can probably see me. I see you. I hear you. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Amrit. Yep. That's a great name too, Amrit. I hope I'm saying that right. It's beautiful. I like it. Uh, I wanted to talk to you all about uh, cancellations. <clears throat> we are seeing extraordinary numbers of terms of cancellations. And that is because <laughs> hospitals are seeing the lowest census that they can remember. <laughs> So these stay put orders, um, the way that resources have been diverted so that COVID units can function uh, and be as safe and protected as they can. All of these things have resulted in hospitals just having really low census in lots of areas. And that's why there's so much um, curiosity and hunger for the unemployment part because we're seeing specialties that were always in our top three, like what? So this is real. Uh, every hospital's different, everyone is different. So we have something called a low census termination, a low census cancellation. Those can happen before you start. Those can happen when you get there. They can happen a weekend. And that is becoming our reality. We're seeing a lot of these. We're seeing our term and cancel rate double what it used to be at TNAA. And other agencies we're hearing are getting hit even worse, especially if they're supplying nurses to very hard hit areas that are working in very big crisis conditions where those nurses are just not needed to the extent that they thought they would be. So what are the tips around how to stay alive during terms and cancellations? Number one, it's going in and understanding risk. And just like y'all take a personal risk, uh, and you take a professional risk when you're going into these crisis jobs. There's also a risk financially because the higher your rate is, the more likely are you, are, you are to get canceled first. If the hospital's paying triple for you, then they're paying for Susie, they're gonna cancel you first. And that's the risk you take. <clears throat> so we see that happens, that's a reality. And your recruiters should be able to coach you to that. And I think y'all know that. Uh, the other the other protection to understand is being able, we talked about, Olivia asked a question about helping hands. Wherever possible, it's building those connections, it's being able to float, it's being as flexible as you possibly can. Because that flexibility can really save you and it can really help you salvage a position. And we've seen some magic happen where we've got extraordinary nurses who are helping out in ways that they never thought, but they're able to make a contribution, they're able to stay where they are. Um, Jill, you want to talk about other ways that nurses can help like alleviate some of the pain of um, being flexible and trying to be useful and, and save their, their contract on their own? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you nailed uh, many of the, the good topics. I think one of the most important things that, that nurses can do to assure that their contract, and this is prior to going, is really make sure your credentialing is buttoned up and done and turned in really fast. We've seen a large um, bundles of nurses get canceled prior to even starting an assignment, but those who were fully credentialed and ready to go weren't and they went on assignment so as a nurse always follow your your clinical quality folks your your quality um assurance people that are getting all those credentials for you make sure you're really timely with getting those documents into them that will help you um rose you nailed it on the flexibility if you're canceled from one unit ask ask what the needs are throughout the rest of the hospital. Is there anyone else who could utilize you? We've had a lot of successes with our nurses doing that uh, in travel assignments. And then just always understanding where you're going and what the reason is for the assignment that you're taking. Um, I would definitely research as an RN myself, I would, re I would research the local health departments. What's happening in that local area? What's gonna drive the census and keep the census in that hospital so that I know I can keep my travel assignment for 13 weeks, eight weeks, whatever it is I'm contracting for. And then always just ask those important interview questions if you get the opportunity to speak to the hospital. Why uh, is it that you're hiring me? Am I here to help with COVID needs? Or am I here to help with um, 
high labor and delivery cases because we're coming into a strong birth month. So those are just a few examples of ways that you can speak and use your voice to try to keep those contracts intact the best you can. Yeah. Great advice, Jill. Um, we also have some, I also, I'm also going to offer some adulting advice. <laughs> so adulting is I have an emergency fund and I have money put aside. And if something goes south, I've got that money. So I do need to say, if y'all are flying by the seat of your pants, traveling in a pandemic with crisis rates is not a good, is a scary time for y'all. So there's just not that stability in the travel market that there was based on your specialty. So have your emergency fund, really think about financially if you had to quarantine what that would look like. If, if for some reason you did get canceled and you had some time in between work, you know, we've offered some information about unemployment, but what are the bridges you have? Where do you wanna to travel to? Do you want to go somewhere you've never been somewhere before? Do you want to go somewhere where you have a social network that might be able to support you, either friends or family? Just think about those things. Uh, because when they cancel you, it's not like they give you a big fat pile of money. But the facility doesn't say, okay, thanks. You know, here's, your, you know, here's the balance of your 10 weeks or your 13 weeks. So just being, being very aware of that. Uh, around ha how to handle the terms and cancels. Always have an emergency fund, no matter what. That's just good adulting. Um, so you get that 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 cushion if you need it. It's also important to know that if this isn't the right time to travel, don't force it. <laughs> you got to feel good. You know, the risk the risk is big. Some people love risk, and some people don't. So you just have to assess your own risk of whether or not this is going to be travel is going to be your journey right now. And if it isn't, then we bless you and you take your time, and these jobs will be back. This industry is strong. These facilities need you. We've, we've just been, our minds been blown by the pent up demand. I mean, think about the surgeries that are gonna need to happen when this is, you know, when these ORs open. Think about the patients that are gonna need you. Um, so there's gonna be a lot happening. So we're gonna feel like. Uh, the other thing I wanted to share with you when it came to terms and cancels is that if you find yourself termed and canceled and you're a peace nurse or you're an OR nurse or talk you, CVOR, boy, your recruiter's trying really hard <laughs> to help you and redirect you. They really are. Um, sometimes they just don't have it. You know, for instance, we've got 5,000 jobs listing right now. 20 of them are OR. That's like a drop in the bucket. A, like literal, 20 out of 5,000. So that's what your recruiters are trying to do. So be patient with them. You know, a lot of them are working extraordinarily hard to help you and their hearts are breaking that they can't. So those are some term and cancel advice ideas. Um, we are seeing a lot of grace where facilities are being a lot more yielding and giving two weeks and, you know, and letting the two weeks happen, letting the week happen. Don't forget your professionalism as much as you can. Do your best not to burn any bridges. <laughs> right? Because those bridges could be really helpful for you when this thing turns around. Um, I'm looking for, oh, I've got some questions. Oh, hi, Rhonda. Uh, Christina Sammons, does a hospital have to give notice to cancel someone for low census? Jill? They don't have to. It's always important to remember that every single contract is different. Um, we are seeing some one week uh, notices, some two week notices, some 30 day notices. We're seeing some with no notice. So it really is dependent on the contract. Um, and so, no, they don't have to give a notice and that's the frustration, big frustration. Yeah. But hang in there. Rose yeah. said it perfectly, hang in there. There are never enough nurses to care for the sick. There aren't enough nurses to care for the COVIDs in some of the high crisis rates. The amount of surgeries that are backlogged in hospital ORs can be in numbers of over 2000 right now. So it's coming, you guys hang in there. It is coming and, and you will be needed more than ever in this ever nursing shortage that we will, we, we will live in for years. It's just one of those hiccup bumps that none of us like that we have to get through. Thanks for the question, Christina. Oh, wow. Listen to Lily. Lily, Lily, you're in the, you're in it, Lily. You know what's going on here. She hung on for three weeks and did environmental work, supply chain. Wow. That's, wow. Yeah. Those are some of the things that we've been hearing too. 
uh, and we really admire y'all for sticking in there. Uh, and your man, the, your good karma, <laughs> your karma points <laughs> for doing that is extraordinary. Trust me, you will you will be rewarded for that. Uh, that's, that's a great that's, example of that super flexibility that we talked about. That's superb. Go Lily, love it. Go Thank Lily, you. go Lily. Good for you. Yeah, and the emergency fund. No kidding. I know. Mm -hmm. uh, Insurance, um, advice about insurance. I know TNA has an insurance bridge, but normally you have to have another assignment lined up within the next 21 days. Yeah, and that's how our benefits work. Uh, and that 21 day bridge is uh, industry is an industry uh, differentiator. Most agencies don't. They cut off your insurance on your last day, so we do offer the 21 day bridge. Um, but Amrit, we also have COBRA. So COBRA is also an option for folks too. So Cindy, do you wanna expand on that a bit? Oh, you're muted. I wonder if we lost Cindy. I feel like we, we lost, lost her. her. Bummer. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. She's back. Yes. I can't hear y'all. Oh, hey. Well, ugh. can you talk about Cobra? Can I send, can I, I'm going to, can you see me, Cindy? I see it. Uh-oh, did we just lose her? Question is, you can't hear me. I know. I'm saying it, you can't hear me. Uh, I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. Oh, I hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Cobra, you can hear. Okay. Well, the Cobra information would be available after, well, we'll keep talking and we'll just assume. Uh, Cobra's available after your last day of work if the bridge is not going to occur. Uh, you will be notified by the company that whom, whomever you're working with, who they use for the Cobra, and that will allow you, you uh, normally sign up for a month at a time with Cobra. Many of the companies will refund you if you need less than a full month. But that is a protection to make sure whatever your insurance has been, that you can extend it. Now, it is more costly, but it does provide you that coverage um, after your uh, contract is termed and before your next assignment. And you can come and go off of it as you need. Okay. Super. Yes. <laughs> wow. Yay. I'm sorry. I'm taking a moment right now. I'm proud of us. <laughs> Great. This is like charades, like sounds like hangman. What the hell? Uh, thank you. So I hope that Cobra answer was, was helpful. Your audio was actually good. So yeah. your audio was good. Um, so thank you for that. Oh, I've got another question. Oh, hi, Kristen. Um, oh, Lily. I like you, Lily. Uh, <laughs> Olivia. Uh, I've got a question from Olivia. What is important for nurses to know when they take a crisis job? Uh, and when they take a crisis job, what should they know if they've never worked a crisis contract before? Jill, you want to... Help me sure. on that one. I would love to. This is such a great question. And we really like to try to prepare nurses to go into these COVID assignments the best we can. And most agencies do because we want to see success and we want to see you succeed. So I think there are a few things that you should ask if you have the opportunity to be interviewed by the hospital or by a clinician who is um, assisting with getting you a job uh, in, a, in a COVID crisis rate. So there's a couple of things you always want to ask. What is their PPE supply? What is um, their COVID protocol? That is something that all hospitals have put into place during this disaster. So what, it, what does that mean? Um, what will they require of you if they need you to work overtime? Um, what will they require of you in regards to the PPE? Um, there is none. Uh, what will you do in those circumstances? And then just those typical questions that you would ask at any point in time. What kind of support staff is provided? Uh, what kind of help will I have? in these particular units? Uh, what are the ratios? I would ask for COVID crisis ratios. They are not the same as what y'all are used to in a standard travel assignment. So always ask what those teams look like. Um, travel guidelines getting to and, and from a travel assignment. Don't ever forget that as healthcare professionals, you're exempt. So you can travel from state to state to state to take a travel assignment. That's always a good question to ask prior to accepting an assignment. 
Um, and I think overall, just really remembering to keep that flexibility piece in the back of your mind, knowing what you're going into, you're going into a little bit of a war zone. Uh, that's how we prepared all of our nurses in New York for lack of better words. The expectation isn't going to be the same day in and day out. The policies change on the hour uh, and things just get incredibly different and hectic. The best thing a nurse can do is partner with other travelers make friends, build your teams, and get through it together. And our nurses are doing a phenomenal job so far. So that's the best advice I can give. Great. It is a different world, Jill, right? Who would have thought, right, two months ago? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You know, that this would be what, you know, what this that this would be what travel nursing is. It is still, you know, and we're in this, you know, what we're talking about it and living and eating and breathing it and trying to figure it out um, with y'all. And it's still just breathtaking at times. Like, <sighs> so great advice. Oh, great. If I show up to, oh, great. I was like, if I show, show what? <laughs> um, if I show up to the state where my assignment is and my assignment gets postponed, can or should I apply for unemployment? I Good bet. Question. Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. But if you are eligible for it and I would encourage you to do so. It may take a few weeks to find the next assignment and that would give you some income during that period of time. So I'd always yes. encourage uh, folks to apply. And again, it's where you have worked last. So if you get there and they've canceled before you work, you need to go to the state prior to if, if you moved in from another state. Okay. That's perfect. That's the lesson. Well done, Cindy. So, right. So if you show up in New Mexico and they want you to quarantine for place for two weeks before you start, you get postponed you do, and you didn't start your contract. That's not where you apply for unemployment. It's where you last worked. Primo. Great question. Thanks for that. Kudos to TNAA. Yay. You too, girl. Thanks. Appreciate it. I'm wondering of other questions of what we've been seeing. Uh, I think it, I'm just gonna riff on recruiters and what recruiters are telling me. Uh, so I, you know, at Travel Nurse Across America, I've been here for about, for six, almost six years. I work with an extraordinary um, recruitment team. Uh, I have the privilege of leading that recruiting team and we work very hard for our nurses to make sure that, you know, they're supported and they have an amazing travel career. And yesterday, I had the opportunity to speak to five of my recruiters. And these are these are my heavy hitters. These are people who have been recruiters for 17, 18, 19, 20 years. So that's like a, that's like a century of recruitment experience. And, you know, they are, um, they've seen so many highs and lows and ups and downs. And they've been through 2009. And they've been through 2005. And they've been through lots of different <clears throat> trials and tribulations and ups and downs. And this really is unprecedented. Karina Shellpepper said that. Oh, Karina Ham, she got married. Um, but when you know somebody and they get married, it's hard for me to catch up with the new names. I'm still calling people by their maiden names. So, and we talked about the word unprecedented, and that's what they were describing to me. And I think that they really talked about how important it is um, for flexibility and to give everybody a lot of grace because every conversation is an emotional conversation, everything's relational. And we can't get through this, we can't get through any of it alone, right? We can't get through it professionally alone. We can't get through it alone, away from our loved ones. We can't get through it. So, you know, when Jill was talking about really connecting and bonding with your peers, with fellow travelers, other nurses, I thought that's golden. That Those feelings of isolation you got to do by yourself are just awful. Um, but these recruiters had incredible stories of nurses just like y'all who are watching you know a lot of you know, allied professionals too who just they want to help and they want to go back to work and they hate the idea of being canceled and they want to look for another job and how you know how intense that is um so i just want to salute everybody for their work ethic because that's one thing you know about nurses they hustle they're well trained they want to work uh, I've got a couple questions. For, oh, Mary. Hi, Mary. Um, I'm a smoke nurse in California, and I'm super interested in getting into med surge so I can be a traveler. Great. I love these goals. It's a good time to assess your career path. Um, any advice? 
Jill, what would you be your advice for a psych nurse looking to get into med cert so that they can have a travel career? You know, the best thing to do if you don't have any of that med surge background in your work history is to really find a perm job to get that med surge training. That's really the best way to change specialties. It's really tough in travel. Um, travelers are needed for their skill set to come into these hospitals and hit the ground running on day one. So it's really hard for us to get the hospitals to do any outside training. There are a few instances and one offs where we have been successful doing that, but it's been more of the ICU PCU buckets. Um, so my best piece of advice is if you're ready to switch specialties, take that leap, go perm somewhere to get six solid months at least, and then get ready to hit the ground as a traveler and you'll be happy you did it. Great advice. That's been amazing, right, Jill, is seeing people, is watching nurses step out of their specialty to help others. There's lots of examples of that, right, with pick you or different ones. You want to talk about that a little bit, about some wins we've had where we've seen nurses just be able to... Yeah, yeah. And you said the PICU, which is perfect. You know, PICU nurses take care of pediatric patients that are incredibly critical on ventilators, but they take care of those patients until they're 20 years old, 25 years old. Uh, so they take care of those large body uh patients on a ventilator and they're able to cross over into ICU fairly simply. So we have had a couple successes of, of putting our PICU nurses into adult ICU uh, scenarios, which has been great. Uh, due to COVID, we have been able to put a lot of our PACU nurses over into ICU, which has been fantastic. So we've been able to make them successful. Same ratios. They take care of vented patients and they're able to convert over successfully. Um, some of our PICU PCU nurses that have been high level PCU work on units with ventilators, take care of those drips, um, titrated drips, all that good stuff can jump to ICU fairly easily with a smaller orientation. Um, so we do get a few success stories in the travel industry letting and allowing our nurses jump specialty like that, but it's really specific to the scenario, really specific to the work history, and really specific to the facility that will agree to um, help us with it. But it's definitely a possibility at times. It's a possibility at times. Mary, go for it. Like seriously, the travel lifestyle and what, like how your life can open up as a traveler. Oh my gosh, I wanna wish you like the best of everything. Yes. Uh, and encourage you uh, to do that because it is, um, you know, the experiences you gain, confidence, the impact that travelers make uh, on healthcare is breath. It's like it's incredible for us, and we're so honored that you're thinking about pursuing this path. We're going to need you, Mary. We're going to need you, Mary. Get a perm job. Get the med surge experience. <laughs> we're gonna need you. Um, Laura. Oh, Laura Silva. Thank you, Laura. Good to know about unemployment. I'm currently on assignment. Uh, I'm currently on assignment just outside of Seattle, and um, COVID-19 definitely slowed down, but so the standard health care, yes. Um, my husband and I have planned accordingly. Great. And my awesome recruiter, Nick Garcia, shout, shout, Yay! shout. He is, he is the bee's knees, uh, placed me here, and because we happen to have family nearby, but you just never know. Our thoughts, prayers, and appreciation to everyone affected by this. Travel with TNAA. Thank you, Laura. I am so glad that you, you know, Nick's amazing and I am very happy that you are someplace safe and that you feel supported where you are and that you're able to find blessings in all this. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for, for commenting um, and the shout out. Really appreciate it. Um, Nick loves Laura. I know I'd love Laura too, Nick, if, Nick, if Laura were talking like me on this thing. So thank you for that. Um, you got it, Mary. Uh, Ashley, uh, if I take a crisis assignment with a super tight turnaround, how are you advising travelers around lodging? Bam! Ashley, what the heck? Are you like, Ashley, you're like an earworm. You're in my brain. Um, so I'm going to talk about that because you really uh, set me up on, prote on how to protect yourself in this crisis uh, and what to do as a traveler to mitigate your risk. So if you are working on a crisis rate and you're going into a hot spot, you have got to think long and hard, I'm going to tell you don't, uh, about taking out at least your 13 weeks. So we are really advising our nurses and we have a full, so at Travel Nurse Across America, we have a full staff housing department. We just, we're very passionate about it. We're very old school about our housing. So we believe that housing can make or break your assignment. 
you could have a great hospital, but if you go home and your four days are miserable because your housing stinks, that's no fun. So housing is a very important factor in a successful assignment. So we look at it and give support. And our housing team has advised us that there are plenty of great extended stay hotels and hotel options that you can be with without having to worry about upfront money and without having to worry about having to be stuck with a lease if the, if the assignment gets canceled. So that has been the way to go. And we had a question about, does the facility have to give you notice? Jill said it. They try, but sometimes they don't. And do you want to be sitting there freaking clear across the country in a strange city with a cancellation and a lease? Nope. Nope. Now, some, you know, there's some um, landlords and people that'll, that will get you out of it, but you really want that headache too? Do you really have to go there and like beg them for that kind of crap or produce your contract? Or blah, 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 blah. So, this is one of those times where we really say hoteling. You know, company provided housing could be a good option depending on what your agency offers. But yeah, housing is definitely a different animal. And we've seen nurses get bit by that. We've seen nurses with five years of experience like, no, 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 no. I've been traveling for five years. I know what I'm doing. Or I'm going to stay with my sister. Well, your sister may not want you in her house with her kids with asthma. Just saying. We've seen that too. You guys have too. You know, this happens. So what used to be really dependable and a solid, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to just do it, it's different. And you don't want to find out it's different in the middle of having to get credentialed and travel across the country or deal with all the other stress that's in your head. So keep it easy. So hopefully hopefully I'll get um, a, a thumbs up from my housing team. Hopefully I represented you guys well. Hopefully I said the right things. They trained me well. So if I, so if I didn't, it's all me. They're awesome. Uh, oh. <laughs> Mary, can you text me back to keep in touch? Mary, ab Mary, I will be, I will absolutely look out for you, Mary. Don't you worry. I got you. Um, you do meet so many amazing people in all places. That's so true. I love Furnish Finder. They often do 30 days at a time. Excellent. That's a great resource. That's a really great resource. Uh, Furnish Finders, Traveler's Haven. We've partnered with them for a really long time. And that's what we're looking to do is protect you from, we're, we're trying to protect you from risk. And those eight, and those companies do that. Okay, great. Okay, good. I got the thumbs up. Yay. Uh, extended Stay Americas and Candlewood Suites have been a true godsend. This is from Angie. Angie knows what she's talking about. Uh, extended Stay Americas and Candlewood Suites have been true godsends for travelers during this crisis and have adjusted their rates and kept their doors open. She is in one in Memphis, and they could not be more helpful and accommodating. Yes. Super. So, yay, Tennessee. Yay, Memphis, Tennessee. <laughs> because Tennessee got a little bit of a black eye on the employment. But at least they're, they're friendly. <laughs> and the Candlewood Sweet takes care of their nurses. So, go, Tennessee. Come on, Tennessee. So, any other questions percolating? Yeah, Angie is spot on. I know. Angie is spot on. I'm just reading comments. Uh, what? What do you think? I think we give this, Rachel. We're at an hour. Um, maybe we give this, you know, another minute and see if anything percolates. Uh, but Cindy, um, Jill, any final spots, comments, or wrap ups for y'all? Oh my gosh, I think we covered everything so nicely. We went through the the hot topics, um, all the hot things that are out there today. Um, all I would say as a nurse to all the nurses, keep doing what you're doing, hang in there. Um, one day we will all talk about this as a figment of our past. We will get through this together and just continue to team up and do what you do best. And just a huge thank you for all you do. Couldn't say it any better. And and don't think of unemployment as anything other than a right, because you do have the right to fall for unemployment when it's the appropriate time. And this is what better time than this. No way you could have predicted. And it is yours to, uh, to fall for. And whomever your employer is should be speeding that process along and not hampering in any way. So if you have issues, you need to go to your HR department and make sure that they're being timely 
and being supportive of you. Uh, we we can't do this without you, and we need you to be able to um, to file and to do what you need to for your financial well-being. So thank you so much. Well said. Thanks, Cindy. Well, we've got you know this has been a great opportunity for us. You know, we were thinking about how can we be of service? How can we be of service? How can we be of service? So at this point. The travel, the travel community has to stick together. We're all in it together. Every agency, every nurse, um, every facility, every VMS, every MSP. So we're very grateful. We love what we do. As you can tell, when you when you hear Jill speak, you hear Cindy speak. Hopefully, you hear it in my in my voice. I wish I could get the voice of the entire company uh, for you to hear the passion that we have for you. Uh, and we love what we do. We wouldn't. I wouldn't be recruit. I mean, as crazy as this is, right? wouldn't be doing anything else but travel nursing right now. Um, nurses have our heart. They have our heart. And y'all are the true warriors. Um, on our last call, we talked about it. We seriously, we pray on y'all every single day um, for your strength and your protection. Uh, you are setting an example for this country. Oh, that's unbelievable. And that change will come from this. And I truly believe that. I think that y'all have elevated the, the, the you have elevated the profe profession through your example. Yeah. So we're here to help you. You're not alone. And we wish everybody a great day. Thanks, Gypsy people. You guys are awesome um, for giving Thank us this Gypsy. opportunity. Thank you, Gypsy. And we hope you all have a great um, rest of your day and a terrific weekend. Thanks, everybody. Bye.